So tau is one of the proteins that clumps up abnormally in Alzheimer's disease and other types of dementia or neurodegenerative diseases called tauopathies. Uh, and tau is a protein that normally is on your microtubules and your cells, and it's very important. But then during the disease process, it becomes aberrantly phosphorylated and it misfolds, kind of falls off the microtubules, and then it starts to clump in oligomers. So instead of having just one healthy tau protein, you have two or three or a dozen all stuck together. And then eventually these go on to make massive fibrils that accumulate in neurofibrillary tangles and the big pathologies in the disease. But the surprising thing that's come out over the past couple of decades, really, is we used to think that the big tangles, the big aggregates that you can see under the microscope, were toxic because wherever they go in the brain, the cells die in that brain region. But it turns out it's not really the tangles themselves, but rather these soluble forms like oligomers that seem to be toxic. And what we did in this study was look at whether the tau pathology could be moving through the brain actually by spreading through synaptic connections, those little oligomers jumping from one part of the brain to another through synaptic connections. To look at this in human brain, we had to come up with a new sort of technology. So in animal brains and mice specifically, we've been able to prove that pathological tau can jump from one part of the brain to another through synapses. And we were able to do that by either overexpressing human tau in a small part of the brain with a virus or restricting human tau expression to a small part of the brain with a transgene. And when we do that in mice, what we can see is the human tau clumps up in the brain region where we express it, which was the entorhinal cortex, but then it also moves to the next brain region down the circuit, the hippocampus, the dentate gyrus of the hippocampus. So in our lab, we also showed with high resolution imaging that this human tau does jump from pre to post synapses, from the axon terminals, the EC neurons, into the post synapses of the dentate gyrus neurons. But that was in mice, and there are lots of issues with mouse models, right? So one of the big caveats with those systems is we overexpress the human tau, so we could be aberrantly driving that jumping. So we wanted to look in human brain, but synapses are very, very small. So to be able to look inside an individual human synapse, we adapted a technique called array tomography, which was initially developed by Steve Smith and Christina McKeva in Stanford. And they developed this technique to look in mouse brain. And what it is, is you take a little bit of brain and you fix it, and then you embed it in a very hard plastic resin that allows you to then section the tissue so that in the Z resolution, in the Z axis rather, it's smaller than an individual synapse. So Christina and... Um, Stephen invented this in mouse tissue, and we adapted it with several different colleagues around the world for use at human postmortem. So when someone agrees to donate bits of their brain um, when they die, we collect small bits of this and embed it for this special array tomography technique. And then with that, we're able to combine that ultra-thin sectioning with standard immunohistochemistry and microscopy to look inside individual synapses. And we looked inside presynapses and postsynapses, and we looked at oligomeric tau using an antibody called T22 that was developed by Rakesh Kayed at UTMB. We looked in two different brain regions in the study, one brain region in the temporal cortex, which is affected early on in Alzheimer's disease, and one in the occipital cortex, which is the last part of the cortex to be affected by tau pathology, with the idea being that we might catch some of the early spread to the, the visual cortex or the, the occipital cortex in that brain region, uh, whereas we're looking at an end-stage end snapshot in the temporal cortex. And what we found in both brain regions is that oligomeric tau does accumulate inside synapses, both pre- and postsynaptic terminals in human brain. And further, when we looked at the pairs, so we said, let's look at the pre- and the postsynapse that are right next to each other. So they're most likely to be a pair that's actually communicating. And we looked at how likely it was that tau was in either the presynaptic side only, the postsynaptic side only, or in both halves, both sides of the synapse. And we found a, a small but significantly higher proportion of synapses in Alzheimer's disease and controls contain tau. And if we looked at that spread of where it is, we would see the most synapses that contain tau have it only in the presynaptic side, and then fewer have it in both halves, and then fewer still have it in only the postsynaptic side. So in human postmortem brain, we can't say for sure that this tau has spread because it's, it's dead tissue. So we couldn't watch it spread from one side to the other. But having pairs of synapses containing oligomeric tau was quite convincing that it could be spreading. Furthermore, out in that visual cortex in the occipital lobe, where some cases had absolutely no tangles yet, none of the big aggregates, we could already start to see presynaptic tau accumulating in, in, the vest, in, the, uh, in that brain region. So we would see oligomeric tau in the presynapses, even in spots in the brain, where there wasn't any big pathology yet. So again, a little bit of indirect evidence to suggest that tau could be spreading through the brain, through the regions by jumping from presynapses into postsynapses.
The paper that I presented at AAIC was the Alzheimer's disease study, and that didn't include, that was all postmortem tissue and some mouse brain. But more recently, in collaboration with my colleague, Dr. Claire Durrant here in Edinburgh, she's a group leader in my department, we've been able to look in living human brain slices. So Claire's lab takes brain donations from a neurosurgical colleague every week when he removes tumors. And usually he goes through a bit of normal cortex to get to the tumor. And before Claire arrived, he would just throw away that normal cortex. But because Claire was able to get some funding and ethical approvals and nurses to help ask people for their permission, now Claire is able to bring living human neocortex back to her lab and slice it with a vibratome and then keep it alive in an incubator for weeks. So it's called our organotypic culture. So she has living human brain slices in her lab. And we collaborated with her group with our shared student, Rob McGeekin, what Rob did was he took human tauopathy brain, this is now progressive supranuclear palsy, a different tauopathy, and he squished it up and either took just the soluble fraction of the cor cortex and he either immunodepleted the tau, so removed the toxic tau from that brain tissue, or used a, a control antibody to mock immunodeplete. So he treated living human slices with either nothing, just their normal media, or tau-containing brain homogenate, or the tau-depleted brain homogenate. And what was really surprising um, and, and was just remarkable to see is that living human postsynapses can take up specifically those oligomers of tau. So they took up oligomeric tau, not really as much of the other type of tau we looked at, the phospho tau. And there was a reaction in the brain tissue to this tau challenge as well. There was a gliosis, so the astro astro astrogliosis, the astrocytes got bigger and grew and some synapses were actually ingested by astrocytes. So what we think this means is that when you have pathological human tau, it causes astrogliosis, it causes uptake of oligomeric tau by postsynapses and synapse loss via astrocyte ingestion. So that's some, some more direct evidence in live human brain that at least living human synapses can and do take up oligomeric tau and that there's a toxic reaction to this. We hope that in the future we'll be able to find out how tau is jumping. So we know that it does now, or I'm very convinced that it does. We have very strong evidence that tau can spread through the brain by going through presynapses to postsynapses. If we can figure out what regulates this or find ways to stop this, the hope is that then we'll be able to stop that propagation of tau pathology through the brain. And it looks like that's a, that's a very promising therapeutic avenue because uh, in mice, at least, when we stop tau propagation, we stop the disease progression, and the mice actually get a bit better. So there's hope for humans as well. Wherever the tau goes in the brain, neurons die. Wherever, When the tau spreads through the brain, symptoms get worse. So if we could stop that tau pathology spreading, we think we could really help people. But that's far down the line because we don't know the mechanisms yet, but that's what we're working on now is how is the tau jumping so that we can help find ways to stop it.